be joined by Charlie Rowley, former advisor to the Conservatives. Is that a badge you still wear proudly after the trumping at the election, Charlie? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, you're absolutely right. It was an absolute uh, trumping, trouncing and uh, just a terrible night all round. But um, uh, yes, look, you know, uh, the party's got to rebuild um, and uh, I'm sure there'll be lots of commentators and uh, Conservative activists uh, and people within the Conservative and around the Conservative Party that are or have a view on the direction that it should take. Well, I, I reckon, Charlie, you're going to have to fight for airspace now because there's going to be an awful lot of former MPs out there trying to become commentators. But let's move on and put you to the test, shall we? You're very welcome on Morning Glory this morning. Uh, let's just pick off uh, a few of the stories. First of all, there's some breaking news I read out. Um, four, four migrants have died trying to cross the English Channel. We know nothing more about this. Just uh, your reaction to that, please. Well, again, it's a, um, uh, a terrible news story because it just highlights the plight of that crossing in the first place. And, uh, you know, there are always um, uh, uh, two um, uh, ways of sort of looking at it, really. You know, first of all, you have people who, uh, who are desperate uh, to get into the UK that sort of, you know, that pay thousands of pounds to these criminal gangs that, uh, yes, the Labour Party, their only policy seems to be to smash the gangs. That's something that the previous Conservative Party was, was doing anyway. Um, but you do have people that are in desperate need to try and come into the UK that take that crossing. So every tragedy, uh, uh, you know, a loss of life is, is a tragedy there. Um, uh, but, you know, there are uh, ways and means of coming into the UK uh, legally. Um, uh, there are also a number of people who are just economic migrants who uh, you often see, you know, young men, young able-bodied men uh, that try and get into the, the country, usually Albanian, where there was a 90% returns rate. Uh, again, under the last Conservative government, you know, it has to stop. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, it, it is a terrible tragedy. It's the same when people lose their life. But you have to have a deterrent to stop people coming yeah. into the UK. The Labour Party seem to have got rid of the Rwanda plan. What have you thought about the Rwanda plan? It's cost. It's, uh, uh, it wasn't even delivered because the election was called even before flights took off. The Labour Party have scrapped that. There has to be a way to tackle this problem, which includes going after the gangs, which includes better processing, uh, but it also has to have Char a deterrent. We don't have that now. Charlie, can can I ask you, I mean, you know, no, no reasonable person is going to sort of blame the current government's policy for what has just happened. Um, and we are obviously seeing, uh, again, huge numbers of people coming in uh, in, in a short period of time, even since the new government. How long, though? should we give Keir Starmer and his government uh, before we can start determining whether their plan to tackle the gangs is working or not? Well, I don't think we can give uh, that long um, because, uh, you know, they were very quick. In fact, it was their very first day in office that Sir Keir Starmer scrapped the Rwanda plan. So, you know, a deterrent has been removed on day one of office. You would have thought, therefore, very early on in their uh, tenure that they would have to be uh, an alternative, a workable alternative uh, to stopping people coming over from okay. the channel. Now, all, all, I, all they seem to... Mm. Well, the only point I was going to make is, I suppose, if we see a huge increase, one could draw the conclusion that... That's because Rwanda threat has been taken away. But let's move on to some other stories because um, obviously we, tra we don't know much more about that tragedy. Just to update people, four migrants have died trying to cross the English Channel. Uh, this is something that's going to keep us all talking, isn't it? Uh, Starmer is basically going to, um, well, he's going to uh, formally declare today that thousands of prisoners are to be released. There is no question, because we've discussed this before, the prisoner state... Uh, was in an absolute mess. That no, the last Labour government, the Conservative governments, they haven't built prisons, and now it's at breaking point. But it just strikes me as a bit odd that the former director of public prosecutions, whose job was to bang people up and, and prosecute them, put them in prison, his first act is going to be to let an awful lot of people out of prison. Is there any logic or support you can give to this at all, apart from easing the, emer the Im immediate crisis? I don't think so, no. I mean, that won't be surprising uh, to hear, but I just don't think this is the right approach. Yes, the prison estate has been underfunded. Yes, we don't necessarily have the, the places uh, that we should have, and that comes down to planning regulations and uh, and just you know, not building the prisons. But the idea 
that the answer is to release prisoners early. You know, and I think, you know, I was listening to um, others yesterday well, I think people serve only about 50% of their prison sentence anyway. This is These plans, uh, I think, are coming forward, uh, maybe later today, are going to be reduced to about... To 40%. Uh, 40%, or, or, 40 um, or, or, or perhaps less so. Now, but he believes, uh, he believes, Charlie, and I think this is the difference, that, and along with his new prisons minister, Timpson, that, you know, we shouldn't be sending so many people to prison. Do you think that is an idea that the Conservatives will buy into? Is it a good idea? Well, I think everybody can get behind the idea that you need to have more prevention of people going to prison in the first place, more prevention uh, of people sort of getting caught up in the criminal justice system. But that starts with, um, you know, uh, uh, better communities, discipline in schools and actually having a police force that can actually go about its business and feels able uh, to uh, go into communities and tackle crime and use things such as stop and search, uh, just an example, uh, uh, and where the, currently I think the police uh, don't feel that they have other powers or just you know turn a blind eye to too many things where they don't sort of you know uh, prevent or catch people early enough uh, to go to prison and what I mean by that is because once you end up in prison uh, it does seem to be a revolving door because I think it's about 90% of people that are in prison have been in there before anyway uh, so but that you know, just means prison isn't working if we built more prisons had more space and resourced it we might actually reduce some reoffending. I mean look the bottom line, you can reduce reoffending, but not by letting everyone out on the streets. They did it in Texas, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I, quite possibly, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, your but, your uh, predecessor, actually... Michael Gove, when he was Justice Secretary, who you worked for, sorry, not your predecessor, he, he, he was a great fan of what they achieved in Texas, but they still put people in prison. It's, it's, it, you know, we've got to do something, but what is the answer? Yeah, I mean, pr pr prison works. I mean, that's the famous uh, Michael Howard uh, uh, saying, I think. Um, you know, it is a deterrent, uh, but it's also a punishment. There are people, uh, uh, bad people out there that have committed crimes, which means that they do have to have their civil liberties uh, removed uh, for a time being, which is why they're uh, behind bars. Mm. Um, uh, the answer is not releasing prison. I don't think there'll be anyone up and down this country who thinks, oh, yes, actually, you know, the, uh, uh, there have been failures to build more prison places. But the answer is to just release prisoners onto back onto our streets. Uh, and it won't take long, I guarantee, um, uh, knowing the home, home Office in the way in which we all do because of the failures that are, that are currently within that department. I would have thought the Home Secretary would have, and the Justice Secretary would have wanted to get to grips with all of the issues that the Home Office faced because of systemic failures, not just, on you know, uh, uh, criminal justice, but you know we know all too often the problems with migration uh, and the way in which the the Home Office seems to behave. I would have thought the Home Secretary of Cooper would have wanted to get to grip with that culture first before well, announcing. Do you know what? I, um, I make a prediction here with you, Charlie. At some mm. point in the next six months, maybe longer, there will be a horrific crime from someone who was yes. reduced reduced early, and the politics will change. Uh, let's uh, look exactly. at Labour declaring that the uh, previous government's decision to approve a new coal mine was unlawful and bang, they're not going to go ahead, it looks like, with the new coal mine. Um, this is brandishing their green credentials, which we're all going to pick the bill up for, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, again, um, it's... Uh... Uh, party political ideology over actually, you know, a sustainable government. And what's going to happen now? OK, you shut down that mine or don't give the, the green light to go ahead. Uh, uh, coal that actually, you know, I think could have been um, uh, used in actually a more green way in which what it has in the past. Uh, that now means that we're going to have to import more energy from abroad. That's going to be more costly, more expensive uh, for... And less uh, green? In the UK. And less green, yes, because in the long, because you know, importing it will have its uh, uh, costs on you know the, the emit the emissions of importing that uh, energy across uh, anyway will uh, you know slap uh, extra thousands of pounds, hundreds of pounds on the bills of uh, of, of hardworking people. Charlie, is this the, the beginning uh, of the end of uh, uh, Starmer's pledge that he wasn't led ideologically, but he was led practically? Because it doesn't seem like his deputy, uh, uh, sorry, his Secretary of State um, uh, Ed Miliband agrees with him. Uh, I think that's right. And look, you know, uh, there are there are two things. Just quickly, what I say, you know, the, the, the Labour government—they've come in. You know, there has been this sort of sea change. You know, the Tories were tired and, and clapped out, and the country's voted for change. And so, optically, you know, you've seen a prime minister that looks quite good on the world stage at the minute. He's enjoying a bit of a honeymoon period. Um, but you know, and that's what people I think are uh, maybe taking a, a, a look at and enjoying uh, that premiership so far. But 
beneath the surface, you're already now seeing uh, a, a revolt on the left, whether it's about the two child benefit cap, whether it's about this energy policy, whether it's scrapping Rwanda, whether it's getting back into bed with the EU through the back door. These are policies that I think uh, uh, the public won't take them, you know, re releasing prisoners early, something that the public didn't vote for, didn't ask for, and don't, I don't think actually really want to see happening. Uh, people will soon realise very quickly uh, that the, the PR and the new sort of guy in, the, in, in number 10 uh, perceiving to be a sensible politician is actually going to be uh, run ragged by the hard left within his cabinet, within his party. And fundamentally a Labour politician. Now, meanwhile, um, Keir Starmer, he's had a bit of a honeymoon week on the whole. I'm sure he's going to come back to problems, but he's been over uh, glad handing with the great and the good, including President Biden, um, where he had his one to one meeting in public and in private. And he came out and said, you know, Joe Biden, oh, he's fine, rubbishing all these health rumours. I suppose he couldn't really come out and say the man's lost it and shouldn't be leader of the free world. But rather unfortunate timing for Starmer, isn't it, when we've got a president uh, in America who seems to confuse President Zelensky of Ukraine uh, with President Putin? Yes, I mean... Uh... <laughs> It is um, uh, amazing, uh, frankly, because the one thing that you cannot do uh, at a NATO summit uh, when introducing uh, the president of a country that has been invaded by uh, uh, another, uh, to introduce that president as its let's, uh, uh, let's, invader. Let's take a look and remind ourselves of President Biden introducing... Now, we president go into a cup final on Sunday. Uh, on top of Russia will not prevail in this war. Ukraine will prevail in this war and will stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. <laughs> president Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway. OK, so look, um, can we forgive him? Or is it just an example of a man who's lost control? No, I think if it was the first time, I mean, look, you know, obviously he, he would have had President Putin on the mind. You can make a, a you know, justification why he said it. Um, but um, it isn't the first time. Uh, he then did a press conference later on in the evening, which I uh, stayed up for to watch, where he uh, uh, described uh, 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 Vice President Kamala Harris as Vice President Trump. Well, exactly. So is... And let's just, Charlie, sorry to interrupt you there. I want to play that again because you make the point well. One thing you can forgive, but a series? Maybe not. This is him introducing his new Vice President. Look, look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she was not qualified to be President. So let's start there. Number one, the fact is that <clears throat> the consideration is that I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once and I will beat him again. I, he's the leader of the free world. It's frightening, isn't it? Uh, it, it is now. And, um, you know, the, what I think uh, was fascinating about yesterday's press conference is that he's, you know, he was there for about an hour, I think, afterwards. Uh, and he talked about lots of issues in terms of geopolitics. He knew his uh, history. He knew quite a bit about, obviously, the regions, you know, talking things about the threats from China, Iran, uh, in Russia, talked about the Middle East quite a bit. Um, so he knows his stuff. And, you know, that's someone who's just been around uh, a long time. But there's lots of people that, that, that know their stuff on these issues. Is he the most qualified to be the leader of the free world if he can't get these very basics right, if he has to uh, moderate his uh, own diary where he says he's sort of he's slowing, that he has to slow the pace down a little bit? Uh, and where, as a communicator... They, they, they need know, to hide him away, really, which is not ideal in an election year. But, Ch Charlie, one thing I'd like to... Just one final thing I'd like to talk to you about, if I may. Uh, Johnny Mercer was a, a, a slightly maverick... Uh, Conservative MP, but um, pretty much adored by the armed forces. Uh, he was uh, in the government. Uh, what's all this about him facing jail? Yes, yeah, so it's um, uh, a story that I'm um, uh, funny if I only picked up yesterday. Uh, Johnny Mercer, effectively uh, ex-veterans minister 
um, has given uh, evidence, he gave evidence to the um, Afghanistan inquiry that was taking place, which was looking into abuses and maybe cover-ups of abuses of, of, of uh, UK soldiers against civilians in Afghanistan. Now, uh, Johnny Mercer gave evidence to the inquiry to say that he was told uh, by very, very senior members of the armed forces uh, uh, of some of the uh, abuse or, or what he had heard um, uh, effectively, but he refused to name the names of those senior officers and those senior officials within the army and he re still refuses to do so. Now, the inquiry then sought a effectively a court injunction uh, to say that, you know, they wanted to compel Mr. Mercer to uh, actually, you know, uh, revealing those names. He still refuses to do so. And so there is this threat that he could actually uh, face uh, some uh, uh, jail time himself. Likely? Although contempt uh, effectively, uh, isn't it? Well, uh, effectively, but I think if you know the Labour Party are releasing uh, or the Labour government are releasing prisoners early, I don't think Johnny Mercer stands a chance. I think you make a very good point to finish on there. But well said, Charlie Rowley, former advisor to the Conservatives.